Good night, everyone. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? I want to take the opportunity to welcome each and everyone to another night of our Youth Week of Prayer. I pray that you have been having a blessed week so far and that indeed our spiritual life has come up a little higher with the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to be on this platform one more time. It's a privilege. We want to thank you for taking us to a tiresome day. And so, Lord, we have chosen to come before you tonight to lift up your name. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. So it will follow as this. So our song service will be done by the music department, then followed by the offertory song and our prayer song. After that, Sister Olive will do the first prayer. I'm asking all of those who have prayer requests, please to send them in as we have two prayer sessions for tonight. Okay? The music department. Good night, everyone. Welcome to another night service. We'll head straight into our song service.
No matter how you try And just as sure as you are living And the Lord is in heaven on high The more you give, the more he gives to you So keep on giving because it's really true That you can't be God's giving no matter how you try you can't be god's giving no matter how you try and just as sure as you are living and the lord is in heaven on high the more you give the more he gives to you so keep on giving because it's really true that you can't be god's giving no matter how you try Someone is praying for you. Someone is praying for you. So when it seems you're all alone and your heart will break in two, remember so. Crowds around you gather in the midst of the storm. Is your ship tossed and battered? Are 
Good night, everyone. Let us pray. Most righteous, kind, loving, loving God and our Father, give you thanks, Lord, once more together here in this fashion. Father God, I ask that you forgive me of my many sins and cleanse me, Lord, of all unrighteousness as I come to you on behalf of the youth of Old Road Seventh-day Adventist Church. Lord God, I place each and every individual into your hands right now, Lord. Father God, you know your people. You know them, Lord, because they are yours, and you give life unto them, dear Father. As they are about to do what you have called them to do, Lord, I ask, dear God, that you just cover them, Lord, shower them with your Holy Spirit and your blessing. Father God, the devil is not pleased, Lord God, with what is happening now. Because your people, your youth standing up for you, dear Lord. Right now, dear Father, he's wrought with them. But I ask, dear God, that you continue to hold them in the hollow palm of your hand. Hold them, Lord, because there's so many things out there to distract them, dear Father. But thanks to you, dear God, they are with you. They are doing your will, dear Lord. So abide with them wherever they are, dear Father. Give them the strength, Lord. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge to do your work and to tell others about your love and your soon coming, dear Father. Help them, dear Father. And as for the young man that is going to give your charge tonight, dear Lord, I ask that you put words on his, on his lips, dear Lord, that when he speaks, Lord, it comes from your throne room up above. Father God, thank you for hearing and thanks for answering. In Jesus' blessed name, amen and amen. 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 Holy Spirit, rain down. Such a beautiful song. We want to say thanks to the music department for a lovely song service. And thank you, Sister Olive, for lifting us up before the throne of God. We continue. So we are now going to have our scripture reading by Sister Shanta Turner. Our second prayer by Elder Duane, a person. I will be doing the introduction of the speaker. And after that, we'll hear the theme song from the music department. Verse 27, and it reads, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Here in this portion of God's holy word, we honor it by saying, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Lord, our Father. Once more, your children come before you. And this another moment, another moment where you can spend it with you. Lord, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. You cleanse me of all unrighteousness. That as I petition the throne on behalf of your young people, on behalf of your youths, my prayers will be answered. 
God, you know the, the troubles, you know the trials, you know the tests that these young people have. You know the, what we go through on a daily basis, Lord. Sometimes we want to give up. Sometimes we want to fit in with the crowd, but you call us to be different. Lord, help us to stand up like a Daniel, stand up like a Esther, stand up like the three Hebrew boys here, Father. We want to stand for you, but sometimes the devil and the things of this world try to get us down. But Lord, we ask that you'll intervene. We ask that you'll give us strength to go through. We ask that you'll give us strength to overcome the trials, overcome these tests, to overcome self, to overcome sin, to overcome this the pleasures of this world. Lord, it is not easy. It is not easy, but it is possible. So we ask that you'll give us strength. We ask that you'll aid us with the power of the Holy Spirit that we will overcome our struggles. Lord, you'll see that many youths are falling off. They are falling out of church, falling out of love with you. And Lord, I beseech you now that you will intervene, that you will go where they are and that you will pluck them from the hands of the enemy. Lord, the truth is some of them are lost. Many of them are lost. Some by choice and some by just following friends. Lord, I ask that you will intervene. Some don't want to be found and that's the truth. They want to enjoy the world because the, the world offers pleasures, pleasures, and all the riches. But Lord, a relationship with you is what counts. A life lived for you is what counts. And Lord, we ask that, we'll, that you will intervene, that you'll answer our prayers, and you'll rescue these young persons. That I place them in your hands, though, those who are still standing for you, those who are still rooting for you, those who are still anchored in you, Lord, I place them before you that they will continue to hold on, continue to live for you, continue to shine for you, and you will exalt them in due season. Help them to understand that the world don't really like them. That's the truth. The devil don't like us. The devil don't like them. And that we are called to be a part from the world to set apart Lord we are the royal priesthood you have called us to be a peculiar people help us to understand that sometimes we get carried away and we are drawn away by our own loss so Lord come true for us this time come true for us tonight and as your speaker presents prepares him or herself to give a charge, to give a message, to give a word. Lord, I pray that you will straighten him or her, that you will hide him or her behind that old rugged cross, that you will be seen high and lifted up, that you will be praised. Is my prayer in Jesus' his name. Amen. Amen and amen. Beautiful prayer. All right, so the task is mine tonight to introduce the speaker for the hour, his brother, Nathan Wills, short in statue. Someone is very reserved, but somebody I admire truly because I've seen him coming up on the rough side and he means Christ. So I know he's nervous, so I'm asking of you tonight to whisper her word of prayer on his behalf. So whatsoever he presents to us, our hearts will indeed pain us. And we would desire to have a closer walk with Christ, as it is evident that he's coming this night. But before he comes to us, we'll have the theme song by the music department. Good night, everyone. At this time, we're going to go straight into singing our theme song. Thank you. 
glorified You to be lifted high All I want is for you You to be glorified starting was blessed to everyone first off i want to give thanks to um sister stedford for that great words of introduction i am shy <laughs> and nervous but i'm here doing god's work and when you're doing god's work you have to inhale confidence and exhale shyness so you can preach the word of god so my topic tonight is Facing hopelessness in your city. Reading this sermon, it actually gave me, um, what can I say? It actually show me how we as Christian need to be more confident and more have more faith in God, and because it it give us so much and help us through so much. And due to a lot of things, we have a short-term memory to how, how much God help us. And we lack a lot of hope in him. So, let us pray. Dear Lord, I come to you tonight as your humble servant, preaching the word tonight to people on Zoom, to people on YouTube, giving your word so they can understand more about you and light a fire in them so they can remember how to worship you in the best way and give them all. In your name I pray, God. Amen. Imagine John, a young man who grew up, who grew up in the heart of a massive city. From a young age, he experienced the challenges that come with the city, come with, come with, come with, sit, come with the city life. His parents work long, long hours to make ends meet, but due to their demanding jobs, job hours to make ends meet, they could not, they couldn't, they couldn't always be presented in life. As time went on, John entered adolescence and began to feel the brutal presence of the city. At this age, at, at his school, the academy competition was fierce and the pressure to get good grades was at his peak. Despite his effort in studying, he sometimes felt overwhelmed by the overwork and the expect expectation from his parents. He wondered if there was truly a future for him in that city. In his community, safely issued, Safely issues were an everyday occurrence. Robberies and graffiti were common, and John had to walk through a dark, particular walk walk through a dark part, part, partially destroyed street when returning from school. He didn't feel safe or connected to his neighborhood, which made him feel even more worse and lonely, discouraged. As John grew older, he realized that his friends and schoolmates were also facing similar challenges. Many struggled with stress of school, economics, hard work, and the lack of a lack of clear plans in the city. They, they questioned whether they would ever break free from the cycle of stress 
and experience of a brighter side of life. And reading this, it's true. Growing up in a place where you don't have a lot of things going on for you, parents don't have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of connections to help you out to certain things and you pray and you pray and you pray. And a lot of times you look at it and say, oh God, now help me out with certain little things. And while you're praying, you say, but the faith that we have and the hope that we have in God, not working out. So John, John as a young John as a young man living in a city where graffiti and a lot of expectation of his parents were strong on him. He was a very independent young man and a very hardworking person. Looking to us, building a hope and a faith in God has a lot to do with our characteristics of being a Christian in this era of age. Faith, love, and faith, love, and hope is one of the greatest attributes a Christian can have in this young era, especially for our youths. Our youths need more faith, or um, need more love, need more hope in God. The simplest thing these days we do as youths and we our way a lot of times we derail of a christian it's easier because some of the time they say god take too long and it's very it's very discouraging to come away from god when god do so much for us literally so much we like if if we if we look into it and pre if we look into it and see the little or look into the the, the much in the little that god has done for us we would cry, really would cry, because we don't deserve a lot of things God have done for us, a lot of things. And the, de the, the development of the lack of hope in city, people all around the world, it, it especially feels like there are no opportunities or a chance for things to get better. And it, it can be related to several causes. These several causes are economics, in economic inequality, one of the strongest contributors to the lack of hope in the cities. Economic inequalities, in a, in a, in a, economic inequalities were there as a vast gap between the wealth and qualities of life of different groups in the city. Those at the bottom that feels like they have no opportunities for improvement. Let's <laughs> speak a lot. Lack of jobs. Cities attract people in search of work and the, and the promises of a better future. But when there isn't enough jobs, many left in eco economic limbo, increasing the lack of hope. Reading this, this is a passage here. It speaks to me because I was in this particular space in my life where a job was actually necessary in my life. And due to a lot of circumstances where money was needed and to do a lot of things, I did have to take a break to get a farm of work. So People, especially the young people, um, who actually, the pressure is on us as young people to build themselves and to people to look up as parents, look up on them and say, well done, my child. You are working and trying to build yourself as a way to get independent. But lack of jobs in the city or in the community can always or more well turn the youth from the church because sometimes they come to church and they say they want a job, they want a car, they want a house, they want such. And praying, fasting a lot, them looking at it and say, same way, them say, God take too long or this not work out for them. And a lot of times it we we can we can try to help them in ways that we think we can help them, but truly work have a lot to do with the youth in the church. Work is like the main asset 
with turn youths from the church. Me, I said, and and it's not some some of them don't have the same priorities that I may have. That after I find a work and pray, and even more while my my faith and my hope was kind of derailing, but I still prayed. I still prayed, and I know what I want. And I know that after I get a word that I don't have to work on the Sabbath anymore, I would be back in church. A lot of them don't even have the mindset to say, I would try to come back at church. Because I look at it and say, church couldn't help me back then. So why would I try to come back to church right now? And it's really sad. Really, really sad. The church is getting fewer and fewer youths, like fewer and fewer. And it's really, really, really sad, especially when it comes to the men. The men are getting so few in church. It's like them follow company more than all them follow themselves. Them don't, it's like them don't have a mind to them own. Then come into church and as soon as a friend say, why are church man now? And these things, they look in teeth and say, why should I go to church if all, all I'm getting from my friend is criticism? It's don't, it don't you know, look good for real for sister, we as youths can help other youth as well. And reading again, homelessness, the lack of affordable housing and housing to good condition and to be a significant factor in the fact of hope. If you don't have a safe and stable place to live, you'll feel like you have no control over your life. True. Really, really true. Insecurity and crime. The sense of insecurity due to high crime level or exposed to violence in the city also contributes to the lack of hope. Sometimes you feel trapped in your own neighborhood and afraid to seek new opportunities. Can the lack of hope in the city be overcome? Where can we find hope? The word hope appears many times in the Bible. It is a reassuring theme highlighting insignificance in faith and our leadership with God, relationship with God. Take a look at some Bible verses about God, about hope. Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 1, Hebrews 11, verse 1. No faith is confident in what we no faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Psalms, Psalms 42 verse 7. Why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within, with dis uh, disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Jeremiah 29 verse 7. For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to prosper you, plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. First Peter verses one to three. First, um, first Peter verses, first Peter chapter one verse three. Praise be to God, and the Father of the and and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope. True the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. These verses help me, th these verses help us better to understand, understand hope. They are like an anchor that help us, help us stay steadfast in the midst of the storm. Just as a ship needs an anchor to avoid drifting, we need to follow these three truths to maintain hope. Those five, those five, ver those five verses, those are the verses that we should read as Christians to the young, the whole, and the growing in the church. We really need to read these verses and put them into action because we cannot read them and not put them into action. Because why would we read these things and not put them into action? We'd be hypocrites. And just like oh, we said, we said, come into church and have hope and faith. And soon as them see we in a certain form of crisis, we turn, we turn away from God or we cuss God away. I would just get miserable and just start cuss. And why would we try to teach them about having faith in God while we and while our faith is so easily broken? 
easily. The simplest thing, the simplest ways how we live and no, it's like we don't like to hear no or we try with someone and someone else see how we see things. We get turned off as Christians, as strong Christians, as Bible workers, as prayers, as a lot. We need to be more strong all in our God, have more faith, have more love, have more hope. Because why would we have these three attributes if we're not a Christian of God? Without these three attributes that we, we need to be as Christian, we would just be really hypocrites. And that is just facts. And again, I read, truth, number one truth, the Bible, the book of hope. Romans 5 verses, Romans 15 verses 4, tell us that. Everything, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, though, that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. The Bible is a treasure trove of hope. The Bible is filled with stories of people who face challenges and obstacles, but also experience hope and divine, um, divine redemption. God speaks to us through the Bible offering us promises and words of encouragement that fill us with hope. In the midst of difficult times, to, fill up, to find hope, guidance and, conf guidance, and co guidance and comfort in God's word, you must be consistent. I love that word, consistent. You cannot just read it sometimes. You have to have, a, you have if you have a little spare time and other times, you do not read. You must you must, you must prayerfully read and study the word every day. It must, it must become a daily habit. Additionally, share the stories of hope from the Bible with others to inspire and encourage those going through tough times. <laughs> that is the next thing of us Christians. We keep the we keep God to ourselves like it's some form of it's like it's some form of item that you don't want to share or you don't want no one else to have. We keep it so we keep it so so tucked in inside of us that not even in our own families we don't share certain things. Within our workplace every day in the year, some people are talk certain look away and never say, don't say that or don't, because them know if we even try to talk to them about God, they know say, don't say that. Because you have the same personality as I have. A lot of times we free it to share certain things in our own community, in our cities, because they know how we stay. We keep God to ourselves. We walk past them daily. We don't talk to them unless it's something that we need to share to them. Or is some form of or is some form of things are 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 um or is some form of Crew say we invite them and we talk to them and we love them up. And as soon as the crew said it's over, where are we? In the midst of their trials and problems. Where are we when they are crying out to help? Where are we when time they 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 can find certain things? Even though a lot of times a lot of people don't talk about them problem, but a lot of times we don't visit them or even try to reach out. Not talking about I'm not excluding myself either. Because we cannot preach and exclude ourselves because we are better than no one. We are human. And humans are no greater than no one. We are humans. That is it. We are humans. So when we, when we as Christians, not preaching, not consistently reaching out to people, not giving up on them because it not suit you how them react to how the teaching or the lessons that you provide with them. In a suit you, oh you in a suit you, oh you approach them and oh them they listen to what you say, it not suit you. So they put them aside because why this person over here is a girl, better talk. So you're more focused on this person. So who are you to, who are you to decide who to teach and who to be consistent with? Who are you to be the one to decide who gets to be or who gets to be? Who gets to hear the word of God more? Just because one one listen to more than the other. You you know 
you you might not ask why are you being so distant. We know my talks. We just assume say they don't want to hear the word. Why don't want to hear the word? Be consistent. Try to be them friend first off more like. Because a lot of times we are not friends to our people in the community. We are not friends to them. We're just neighbors. We're just like, we're just passing by. We don't love them. We just talk to them because it's necessary to build our confidence of Christians. Reading again, truth number three, the second coming. No, truth number two, Jesus, the hope of glory. No. Um, yeah, truth number two, Jesus, the, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, verse 27 tell us that God has chosen, God has chosen to make you God has chosen to make known among Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is in Christ. The hope of glory. Jesus is the ultimate source of hope. Represent, represents divine glory. His life, death, and resurrection of, offer us the hope of re, recon, reconciliation. Re, reconciliation. There it is. <laughs> which God has, which God, with God and the promise of eternal life. Faith in Jesus transform our lives and fill us with hope of attending eternal glory with him. To maintain hope, it's crucial to develop a personal relationship with Jesus through prayer and through prayer and reflection, experience his hope and transformation in our lives. Before I go to three, that speaks to me strongly because a lot of times we not even know who we are as Christians. We not try to build ourselves with God first before we try to convert no one else. Because we try to tell them something and we don't know who we are. Trying to, tell, trying, to, trying to tell a person about God and you don't know God truly for yourself. It's like, why are you lying to yourself? Why are you lying to yourself? It don't make no sense. Building a relationship with God is like, it's an everyday, everyday, every second, every minute type of Time, the time we take to do so many silly things. The time we take to do so many silly things. God, the time we take to do so many silly things and the time we take to praise God. If it was on a scale, where would God where where would God's side be? God's side would be nowhere near where we spend time with idleness. The time we should spend with God, it should be a personal, everyday, consistent. That word consistent stings me because we don't spend a lot of time to be consistent with God. We don't spend a lot of time to be consistent with God. Not at all. We should. The relationship with God should be something personal. So when persons, when people see you, they don't have to ask you. They don't have to, they don't have to think twice when they talk to them. They know Say, you're a person of God. They're not looking at it and say, why are you talking to me and you are not of God? I also like can look for a person inside the church and tell a person inside the church for years, say you're not a person of God. How? Oh. How? Oh. How? Oh. Years. You're in a church in years and a person can look for you one day and say you're not a person of God. That is so, so strange. And we think we should look into ourselves and find out why. Why? And reading again, truth number three, the second coming of Jesus, our blessed hope. Titus 2, verses 13 says, While we wait for, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the, the appearing of the glory of our great God. And Savior Jesus Christ. The promise, the promise that Jesus will return is a source of hope for believers, knowing that Jesus will come back to establish his eternal kingdom. Fill us with anticipation and motivate us to live in holiness and preparedness. This hope gives us the strength to face, face current difficulties 
with certainly a glorious future. In challenging times, always remember the promise of the second coming of Jesus, the second coming of Christ to feel comfort and strength. True number three. We know this. How many, how many other know this? That we know that we call friend, family, and neighbors. The second coming of Christ is our comfort. It, our, it is our hope. It's what motivates us to go to church, to, to, to praise God because we don't want to be left behind. It motivates us. But who else does it motivate? Otherwise, some people in the church and church relatives and church friends. Who else does it know? Who else know about the second coming of Christ and Christ is coming for his people? Not our family, not our friends, his people. Not our enemy. Because we don't have any enemy. As long as we have as long as we have as long as we are children of God, we don't have no enemies. What is enemy? Enemy is not a enemy is not a enemy is not of our Christian nature. We, don't, we shouldn't be speaking even that word. We should be teaching and we should be having a strong hope in building ourselves to teach others to be waiting for God's second coming. And the conclusion, the conclusion in summary, the Bible, the Bible offers an infinite source of hope Jesus is the embodiment of hope and of glory, and the second coming of Christ is our blessed hope. By embracing these truths and, and applying them in our daily life, we can experience hope that, trans that transcends circumstances and guide us towards an eternal future with God. Do you remember, John? One day he had the opportunity to attend, uh, attend an evangelistic conference in the city. The preacher talked about the importance of being strong, seeking opportunities, building a support network, and developing a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. The speaker words deeply impact John, who began to seek ways to improve his situation. Through the city, still had its challenges still had its challenges still had its challenges john began to seek a glimmer of hope in his future he realized that with effort and the right support he could overcome obstacles and pave the way for a better life and in the closing john's story reminds us that even in the toughest cities, hope and personal growth and possible are possible when you seek support, opportunities, and open your heart to Jesus, the hope of our glory. So when we don't give Jesus the full control of our lives, the full control of our mind, the full control of our love, the full control of all our actions that we take in life, we would be just walking hypocrites in pretty uniform, pretty hair, pretty all sorts of things. We'll just be looking pretty, that's all. We'll just be talking pretty, that's all. We'll just be looking, we'll, we'll just be a big pretty place. Nothing more. So please, while listening in the sound of my voice, please listen. Please put these actions in. Me especially, me, I'm talking to myself also. Every individual, every individual who is hearing my voice, please listen. Please take these words into action. Don't listen to them and say, oh, another sermon tomorrow night. What's next? All the sermons from Sunday to Saturday is going to be the same. Put God first. God is all. God is all. Without God, we would be nothing. We are nothing. Put God first in everything that we do. The faith, the love, and the hope that we have in God should be more than 100% because we do not deserve 
the things that God is doing for us, even without we even asking. We, we ask for people, God give us a mountain without even asking. We ask for a little and God give us more than what we expected to get or more than we deserve to get. And a lot of times we forget that God did this for us and complain about what God didn't do. For what? We have so we have this short memory of actually remembering what God has done for us. It's like it's a program. And we're not delete or forget the good, we're not, we're not delete the bad things. We're deleting the good things. Why should we delete the good things and keep the bad things in our mind at all times? At all times. We keep the bad things that God has done for us. That if God has done for us what we have done to ourselves, because we put ourselves in certain situation and expect God to take us, take us out of it and snap us a finger. Why? God don't owe us nothing at all. So, brethren, as I'm closing, please have a little more faith, a little more love, and a lot of more hope in God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I come to you tonight to give you thanks for preaching your word, talking to talking to the talking to our fellow brethren, God. I pray that you help us to be the better version of ourselves. Not for tomorrow only, not for tonight only, not for this week only, but till you return for us and we can return to your kingdom. Help us to spread your word with true and loving. Not just to tell them because it's like it's a duty where we just have to just do it because we are Christians and people are looking at us say, yeah, you are Christians, so they must have to tell us about it. No, let us tell people about the word with love in our heart. Let us teach them. Let us have consistent prayer, worship with them. Teach me to give, teach me to put the right words in my mouth of you, but not of me, Lord. I pray that we have more hope, more love, more mercy towards our fellow community, our cities, the people in our cities, the people in our communities, the people all around us, Father. Let us not turn our eyes away from them just because they're not giving us the attention or the response that we need to hear, Lord. I ask you, God, please. Please, God, I'm not just praying this. Because a lot of time we pray for a lot of things. We pray for faith. We pray for love. We pray for patience. We pray for a lot of things. But when you put us in a situation to advance on those prayers, we ask for those prayers. And we, when you put us in the situation, we complain. Not knowing that you're actually building our characters with certain trials, the trials that we need to build ourselves, Lord. I hope that we understand the trials that you're giving us so we can build ourselves in you. I pray, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. I just want to leave with this. I just want to leave with this last verse from Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will, will renew their strength. They will soon. They will soar on they will soar, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So as we take our step in Lord, take our step in God's work, let us not be weary. Because God don't make us weary. We make ourselves weary. So let us move in God's footstep and be like Christ. Not just talking, but building the action. And so we can soar like eagles in God's word. Amen. Amen and amen. Brother Nathan has exceeded my expectations tonight. And Bridging, he has spoken words of truth, words that we need to look into ourselves. 
and see where we have gone wrong. I just want to extend just a little bit as I ask Pastor Loans to do a special prayer for our youths so that they will have hope, so that they will not bow to the pressures that this world has to offer, and so that they can remember that heaven is our true destination. Pastor Loans. Pastor Loans. All right, let us pray. Eternal Father, we come one more time before you, and indeed, our hearts have burned within us. And the words of truth tonight was presented unto us. I pray, Father God, that we will not just take these words, go home, sleep, and tomorrow morning we wake up, and it's as if we heard nothing. I pray, mighty God, that you will help us to put these words into practice, put them into actions, so that others around us can see that we have a relationship with you because our lives has been transformed. I place all our youths that are currently on this platform, those who attend church, those who have attended church and are not doing so now. Father God, I ask of you to help us, give us backbones that we will not crumble under the pressures of this world. But Lord, we will hold up the, the banner of Prince Emmanuel and we will stand for what we believe in. We ask, Almighty God, in times when we feel as if there is no hope, help us to turn to your words, because in your words there is hope. And Lord, you really, really want to prove yourself unto us. Because time and time again, Lord, we have forgotten how you have brought us through. And so, Lord, I ask of you tonight that you will help us. I pray, Father God, that we will keep heaven at the forefront of our brain, in spite of all the achievements that we want to accomplish in this life, Lord, help us to remember that heaven is our destination. Lord, thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Virgin, let's keep on praying up Brother Nathan. And he is a, what you would call it now, a perspective, if I have the right word, <laughs> to, for him to be used again to spread the word of God. Have yourself a great night and remember, let us keep on focusing on God so that our hearts and our minds will truly be blessed. Have a great night. What a glory.
Return.